Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Yash Franklin Hodge, chair of the Public Improvement Commission. Um, and I call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of uh, February 17th, 2022. Uh, Mr. Liming, please take a roll call. Certainly, would the representative from the Public Works Department please uh, state his or her name? Uh, Yasher Franklin Hodge. Thank you. Property Management Department. Joseph Callahan. Transportation Department. Amy Cording. Water and Sewer Commission. Denise Devlin. Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Sarah Leon. And my understanding is that a representative from ISD is not present. Uh, we do have quorum though. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Liney. So at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, uh, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on January 27th, 2022. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes of January 27th, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Uh, all right, uh, up first is our utility poll hearings. Uh, so uh, utility poll one, uh, on petition by Eversource Energy for a poll installation within Gardner Street, uh, Public Way, Brighton, to install three new utility poles to be located on its northerly side, generally east of Malvern Street. Uh, can the presenters uh, introduce themselves and provide a brief overview of this? I believe we, we have, have uh, someone from Eversource on. I believe we have Chanel from Eversource. Chanel may be frozen. Chanel, are you there? Are you able to? Uh, Chanel Grant from Eversource, if you would like to begin uh, presenting for Gardner Street. Uh, is there anyone else from Eversource uh, who's available? Messaged her. Uh, I'm not getting a response though. Uh, uh, she may be having some technical difficulties. Why don't we skip the three poll hearings for now and proceed to public hearing number one? And then after he public hearing number one, we can try Eversource again. That sounds great. Uh, so moving on uh, to public hearing number one uh, on a petition by uh, OPG 745 Atlantic uh, owner uh, LLC for making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper consisting of sidewalk and driveway curb cut reconstruction as well as new and relocated street lighting infrastructure bike racks stormwater recharge infrastructure Atlantic Avenue on its westerly side at address number 745 South Beach Street South Street on its easterly side, south of Beach Street. Beach Street on its southerly side, generally between Atlantic Avenue and South Street. Uh, and these are, uh, as uh, these were on the new business agenda of uh, 127, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division. Specific repair plan, Atlantic Avenue, South Street, 745 Atlantic Ave, Boston proper. Uh, two sheets dated December 3rd, 2021. Uh, would the presenters introduce themselves, their affiliations, and provide a brief overview uh, of the project, as well as reporting back on any uh, outstanding questions or, re or revisions result resulting from the new business hearing? Hello, this is Kevin Wright from uh, VHP. Um, I'm the civil engineer is working uh, with uh, Oxford. I'm here with Daryl Leland, who's, a, who's the owner uh, representing the project. 
um, as well as uh, we have John, John Jennings, who, who's the architect, um, and Nate Sherwood, who's uh, with Haley and Aldrich. Uh, as the uh, project was brought forward last week, the, we had several improvements to Atlantic Avenue and um, Beach Street and South Street to go along with uh, reno interior renovations for the building. Um, and at this time, I'll present the plans as they were shown. Bear with me one second. Can everyone see this screen? Yes, we can. All right. Uh, this is the uh, South Street side of the, the project. And, uh, uh, for South Street, we we sent out all the necessary notifications to uh, city agencies and utility departments. Uh, we worked extensively and closely with uh, each one of the comments that we received uh, to come up with uh, the plans that you have seen here. And as I'll zoom in, so it's a little bit clearer to everyone uh, what we're doing. Uh, we are replacing uh, or re, re show, reconditioning the uh, existing garage to city of Boston standard uh, commercial driveway um, so that it, it has the uh, standards for that accessibility across the, uh, the driveway with uh, the necessary curb radii. Um, we'll be putting in a uh, concrete sidewalk uh, and accessible four foot, uh, con approximately four feet. As I noted last week at the New Business Hearing, there are pinch points with the existing trees. Um, and we'll be putting in wire cut brick per the city standard uh, in the furnishing zone. And as a request of uh, the street, street lighting department, we'll be um, replacing the uh, existing steel handhold covers with um, composite frame and covers. Uh, and that's the uh, conditions on South Street, as worked out with um, with the transportation department, we're putting in City of Boston standard bike racks in three locations, uh, or three, excuse me, three uh, standard bike racks in these locations on Beach Street, which is a part of that plan. Uh, do you want to ask any questions related to this, or should we move on to Atlantic Avenue? Um, I think let's uh, let's do the, the full presentation and then we can open it up for the commission. All right, thank you. Uh, so the next is Atlantic Avenue, uh, and this is very similar to um, South Street with the exception of a couple of other things, and I'll zoom in here for you. Uh, so on Atlantic Avenue, um, to meet our stormwater requirements and the fact that we're uh, uh, in the GCOD area, uh, we'll be installing three injection wells uh, in the sidewalk. Uh, th those are uh, able to meet the uh, stormwater requirements that we are required to put in place. Uh, and we'll have a uh, overflow uh, structure, which is a 24 inch novel class um, structure uh, so that we can connect to the city's drainage system. On this side, we'll have standard uh, concrete uh, sidewalk replacement uh, all the way to the existing point on Beach Street, which was uh, recently redone. Uh, the existing ramps will be in place. Uh, they're compliant and recently re redone, and the project will be very um, cognizant of, uh, you know, making sure that they are aware that any, any damage done to those ramps would, would be altered, but we're, we're replacing all the brick that's out there with a uh, sidewalk. Um, again, there are some pinch points along here where it's a little less than six feet. Um, and then we'll be putting in the wire cut brick as well in the furnishing zone. All existing trees will be protected and remain as shown. And the other uh, component that we worked out with the uh, PIC staff and um, Commission on Persons with Disabilities, as well as the VTD, was uh, redoing this uh, existing loading dock area to show um, 
the replacement of uh, what's currently bituminous with uh, concrete. So we'll be removing the detectable warning plates and the f uh, flush curb situation and providing a, a, a accessible path across this driveway by replacing it with concrete. Um, there is a, as we worked out and discussed last week at the news business hearing, there is some drainage and um, and the loading dock height requirements that you know prevent us from doing a full traditional drive. We're not allowing uh, this drainage to remain. So uh, from this point forward, we'll have the accessibility and then this uh, ramp down to the uh, existing street. Um, and uh, as well, as we worked out with the um, street lighting department, we'll be replacing the existing steel uh, handle composite covers with framing covers as well. Uh, yeah. The, the composite framing covers. Um, and that's the extent of the work that is going on on Atlantic Avenue. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioners, any uh, comments or questions? Oh, yes. Uh, good morning, Kevin. This is Denise Devlin from Boston Water and Sewer. Uh, just a couple of small comments. Um, we just want to, it's a friendly reminder to raise any uh, castings to the new surface. And also um, on the Atlantic Avenue section, right near the driveway, it looks like the catch basin is not um, not up against the edge of pavement. Um, if you can just, you know, check that and just make sure it's not like, you know, in, in the, um, the brick section. Um, and it's also a friendly reminder to uh, put a gutter malt on the catch basin and, and to uh, address any comments, other comments uh, we have through the site plan process with our department. Thank you, Denise. Uh, yes, we, we are in our second round of comments with uh, your, your group at the commission and we'll be resubmitting on those. So we'll, we'll make sure to continue to coordinate and work that out. Okay, Thank great. You. Thank you, Kevin. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Kevin, this is PJ. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Kevin, the public works just got through rebuilding Beach Street. I'm going to assume that the scope of work which you are doing is not going to do any damages to the sidewalk and or the street in terms of construction activities and or utility connections? That is correct. Okay. We will still hold a deposit to ensure that everything is fair and square, but you are not anticipating any utility connections of Beach Street and or Atlantic. Is that correct? That is correct. There's uh, existing um, things that are working in the building, but nothing is to be done on Beach Street uh, as it is a guarantee street and recently completed, um, with the exception, as I stated, uh, when we show the other plan that we'll be putting in the bike racks per the city standard. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Any other uh, comments or questions from the commission? Any comments or questions from the PIC staff or the public? Uh, no, uh, though I will take this opportunity to remind um, all uh, hearing participants, if you do wish to add testimony or ask questions, please use the raise hand function um, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, but no, none, none for this action, Commissioner. Thank you. Going once. Uh, all right, can I hear a motion to approve public hearing number one? Make a motion to approve a petition by OPG 745 Atlantic Owner LLC for the making of specific repairs in Atlantic Ave, South Street and Beach Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. Uh, all right. So Thank we you. will. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, so we will continue on with public hearing number two um, um, can, on a joint petition. Sorry, can we uh, go back to Eversource, see if they've uh, Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Issues? Uh, Chanel, are you, uh, are, you, are you able to, to speak? Uh, I don't think we can hear you. Nope, still not able to hear you. No, 
Yeah, she's, she's unmuted, but it looks like still technical difficulties. Yeah, something, something going on with the audio. All right. So I think we'll, we'll move ahead with, with uh, the next group of public hearings and then uh, come back if we can get the technical uh, piece uh, sorted out. So uh, moving on to public hearing number two on a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co. LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the discontinuance of any and all rights to travel the public, uh, to travel the public may have had within a segment of Walford Way, a public way in Charlestown located between Tuff Street and Corey Street. Uh, this was new business from January 27th of this year, uh, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Discontinuance Plan, Walford Way, Public Way, Charlestown, one sheet dated December 17th, 2021. Um, can the presenters introduce themselves and their affiliations and provide a brief overview of this uh, project and report back on any uh, outstanding questions or changes from uh, the new business hearing. And uh, I will uh, also ask um, for the PIC staff, is it okay if we ask the presenters to uh, share uh, on the, the full set of things here or should we take these uh, plans one by one? Uh, so they can give a general overview of the project uh, at the outset, um, and, but then after that we will turn the discussion to uh, public hearing item number two specifically, so the discontinuance. We'll take action on that discontinuance item, and then we'll move on to number three afterwards. Perfect. All right, please go ahead and uh, introduce yourselves. Thank you very much, sir. My name is Addie Grady. I'm with Leggett McCall Properties. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, everybody see that? Yes, we can. Great. Uh, so I'm going to give a quick overview, as I did in the uh, new business hearing a couple of weeks ago, and then turn it over to my um, colleagues. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here this morning and for the time that the uh, commission and the staff, commissioners and the staff, have spent with us over the last several months and several weeks um, to answer questions and uh, provide as much information as possible. Uh, as I said, my name is Addie Grady. I'm a senior vice president with Leggett McCall Properties, and I'm the executive director of the Munker Hill Housing Redevelopment Project. Uh, the project overall is a tri-party partnership between Leggett McCall and the Joseph J. Corcoran Company, along with the Boston Housing Authority and the Charlestown Residents Alliance. The public-private partnership is established to redevelop and replace the existing Bunker Hill housing development in Charlestown, which is an 1,100-unit housing development that was built uh, about 80 years ago, and it's the largest public housing project in New England. Working in phases over the next 8 to 10 years, we will enter into 99-year ground leases with the BHA, who will continue to own the land, monitor operations and management, and continue to protect the public interest in long term. The CRA, the Charlestown Resident Alliance, and the residents will play an important and active role in the overall process and have to date. Uh, meeting, we meet with them on an extremely regular basis, several times a week. Um, and uh, they've been um, very uh, uh, helpful and supportive uh, through the process so far. I'm joined this morning by my colleague, Nick Nigro, our design and construction manager. Uh, as well as John Schmidt and Ryan Gordon from Leach Engineering and David Linhart of Houston. Quickly, I'll just go through the master site plan, um, the approved master plan, the project benefits, and quickly just the six, phase one site plans and renderings, uh, which is what we're here for today, phase one. So the master project site is located in the northeast corner of Charlestown. You can see here that the Tobin Bridge runs along the eastern um, edge of the site. Uh, and the site overall is comprised of about 25 acres bounded by Bunker Hill, Medford, Polk, and Decatur Streets. The 1,100 units, uh, housing units on site today are 100% deeply affordable public housing units. They're in a state of chronic disrepair due to lack of federal funding and HUD determined uh, about five or six years ago that the project required demolition and redevelopment. It'll be redeveloped by a partnership between Leggett like McCall Properties and Joseph J. Corcoran Company um, as I said, with close collaboration with the BHA and the CRA. And the overall development plan was approved by the BPDA board last February and the Zoning Commission, uh, sorry, BPDA board last January and the Zoning Commission in February. It's 2,699 units in total, of which uh, 1,010 are replacement public housing units, 
Uh, so it's about 37% uh, deeply affordable uh, units across the site. Uh, the plant, the overall plan consists of about seven uh, acres of usable open space, nearly 40% of which will be organized into publicly accessible park style open spaces maintained by um, an association of owners of the buildings, but on ground leases with the BHA. The plan also includes about 50,000 square feet of retail, 20% of which will be offered at affordable um, retail rents. Uh, as well as a 14,000 square foot community center. Overall, the project will uh, create a, mix, a true mixed income community with myriad public benefits, including a full commitment to uh, passive house um, certification uh, and a very active public realm. The phasing of the project will um, play out over about an eight to 10 year period. We're here today to talk about phase one, which consists of two buildings. Uh, and both buildings will feature residential open space and enhanced public realm at the streets, meeting complete streets, guide, streets guidelines, um, and provide uh, both publicly accessible and residential open space. Uh, and here's how the buildings um, look from a rendering perspective. Um, we're creating about 250 units in building F uh, 22 percent of which are deeply affordable replacement public housing units and building M will include about 102 um, uh, deeply affordable public housing replacement units 100 percent affordable building and with that I will hand it over to John unless anyone has any questions about the project as well Miss Grady quick question sure uh, is there a representative from the Boston Housing Administration that has joined you for today's presentation? Uh, I don't believe so, no. Uh, th this is David Lenhart with Wilson Stores. Uh, Allison has joined us from, from BHA. Oh, okay. Good Thank morning. You. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, Ms. Burton, we can hear you. Oh, great. Oh, good yeah, morning. Good. Yes, Allison Burton here for the BHA. Thank you, Allison. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering here to speak to this uh, petitions. Um, as you can tell by the agenda, we're petition all this entire project takes petition number two through petition number 10. Um, this is an overview of the entire site and the streets that are affected by or impacted by all these petitions. Uh, we have Decatur Street over here, which, in, which is abutted by building F. We have Moulton Street here. We have Sam Morris Way here. We have Corey Street here, uh, Wilfrid Way here, Tuff Street here, and Medford Street here. This is building M, which is part of phase one, and this is building F, which is part of phase one. The first action in this uh, package is the discontinuance of Wilfrid Way. Uh, this is uh, a public way that essentially has no utility, basically has no utilities going through it except for uh, drainage, which is being cut and capped in uh, as part of this project. Uh, other than that, there's no other, no other utilities within the street. Um, we have submitted 75% drawings to the city public works department, as well as Boston Water and Sewer, and have received those comments. And they're in the process of revising our plans to submit a 95% package in the coming weeks. But this first action is the, the discontinuance of Walford Way. Just any questions? Any questions or comments from the commission? Todd, the yeah, fee ownership of Paul Fred Bay is BHAs or cities or? BHAs. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Any comments or questions from the PIC staff or the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number two? I'll make a motion to approve a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the discontinuance of Walford Way as read into the record by the chair. Second. Right, All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. 
All right, moving on to public hearing number three on a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening and relocation of the existing right of way lines of Medford Street, Public Way, Charlestown, located on its southerly side, generally between Tuff Street and Corey Street. This was new business from January 27, 2022. And this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division widening and relocation plan, Medford Street, Public Way, Charlestown, one sheet dated January 5th, 2022. Uh, would the presenters please uh, uh, reintroduce themselves and uh, walk us through uh, the change here. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. So uh, before you is the, the overview of the area. Um, this section of Medford Street between Tuff Street and Corey Street will be widened, relocation, widened and relocated to allow the city um, a wider public access through this area of Medford Street. And you can see the details on this next drawing here, where the widening of Medford Street through this area is approximately eight feet wide. And this will allow us to uh, provide a complete streets program within Medford Street, as well as the city's uh, uh, goal of providing bike paths within Medford Street in the coming years. Any questions or comments from the commission? Ms. Grady and Ms. Burton, uh, this is obviously a very exciting project. And throughout the next few years, uh, you will see many of our streets, city owned streets that are going to be impacted by construction vehicles and all the construction of your housing units. Uh, would you be able to tell us as part of your various next few items that are going to be as part of today's hearings. Will you be rebuilding or resurfacing the internal streets? John, do you have a sense of yes, where um, that stands? Yeah, so um, let me go back to this overview here. So through this project, we are reconstructing, uh, we, we are reconstructing full reconstruction on a portion of the sidewalks that abut our, for instance, here at Corey Street, because this is a multi-phase project, We'll be reconstructing the sidewalks that abut our, our, our project. We're also doing extensive utility improvements within Corey Street new, and other public ways, new storm, uh, some new sanitary, and I believe Boston Water and Sewer is also having some public infrastructure improvements planned um, and around the same time, so we're coordinating closely with them. Um, so uh, essentially, there's, there'll be full depth reconstruction of these streets within the development. And as you can see over here, this green line is the future widening relocation. So we're doing our design to provide not only the temporary conditions so the streets function properly, but in the future, when this widening occurs, we can do so without having to disturb, disturb the work we've done to date, or at least mitigating the extent of disturbance. We've, we've, the extent, mitigating the extent of disturbance to the work that we're performing today. Thank you, John. Yes. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Any questions or comments from the PIC staff or members of the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number three? I'll make a motion to approve a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening and relocation of Medford Street as read into the record by the chair. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Moving on to public hearing number four on a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening and relocation of the existing right of way lines of Quarry Street, Public Way, Charlestown, located on its easterly side between Medford Street and Samuel Morris Way, as well as on the westerly side between Samuel Morris Way and Moulton Street. Uh, this was introduced as new business on January 27, 2022, and is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening and Relocation Plan, Quarry Street, Public Way, Charlestown, one sheet dated January 5, 2022. Uh, would the presenter please reintroduce uh, himself and uh, walk us through it. Good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. So uh, Quarry Street, we are widening and relocating widening and relocating sections of Quarry Street that abut the phase one improvements. This section of Quarry Street from the corner of Medford Street to the extent of the land that we control, we do not control this parcel here. So the widening ends here and then we transition back into the uh, existing condition. 
We also provide widening relocating this section of Corey Street down here. And again, this is to allow the uh, streets to be provide better pedestrian access and incorporate the complete street guidelines. And here's the official drawing. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission? Any questions or comments from the PIC staff or members of the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number four? I'll make a motion to approve a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co. LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening and relocation of Quarry Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. Uh, Moving on, public hearing number five on a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co. LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening and relocation of the existing right-of-way lines of Tuff Street, Public Way, Charlestown, located on its easterly side from Medford Street to a point south of Walford Way. This was introduced as new business on January 27, 2022, and is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening and Relocation Plan, Tuff Street, Public Way, Charlestown, one sheet dated January 5th. 2022. The presenter, please introduce uh, himself and uh, walk us through. Good morning, John Schmidt with Mitch Engineering. Uh, so this section of Tough Street from Medford Street to the extent of that we control um, the parcels on it, the widening relocation is proposed on the parcel, uh, the, the building F side, which is part of the phase one construction, uh, up from Quarry Street to this point here. And as you can see by the green line at the bottom of the sheet, that is for the future widening and relocation, which will happen in future phases of the project. So now we're, for this application, we're widening and relocating just the areas for phase one. Uh, and so we can incorporate the complete street guidelines when we reconstruct these streets. And this is the official drawing here. Uh, does anyone have any questions? John, a couple of times you mentioned that the limits are controlled by a, a barter which you don't have Correct. Uh, may I know who that abata is? Is it multiple abatas or a single source? I believe it's a single source. Um, okay. I don't know if anyone from uh, no, no, late it, speak to it's that. Okay. It's okay, John, because my concern is you are creating a city, a, a new design standard, not a new design standard. You're going from a 40 foot right of way to something else, but then it's going to sort of pinch point at the property transition point. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, I just want all the commission members to recognize that the street will look a certain way from Tufts between Medford to right. the other side of Walford, and then it'll shrink to whatever the... the um, yes, the unfortunate thing is, for instance, where we have the abutter here, we control the other side. So um, there, will be, there will be some change in character, but uh, we're working hard to make that as, uh, as trans seamless as possible. As seamless as possible. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Any comments or questions from the PIC staff or the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number five? Make a motion to approve a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co. LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening relocation of Tuff Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. I'm moving on to public hearing number six on a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co. LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening and relocation of the existing right-of-way lines of Decatur Street, uh, Public Way, Charlestown, located on its northwesterly side between Vine Street and Samuel Morris Way, uh, introduces new business on January 27, 2022, and shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening and Relocation Plan, Decatur Street, Public Way, Charlestown, one sheet dated January 5th, 2022. Uh, would the presenter please uh, state their name and walk us through the change. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. So the widening relocation of Decatur Street uh, begins at the intersection of Vine Street and ends at Sam Morris Way. Uh, and it's along the project side of, uh, of the street. We do not, the, the, the row of townhouses across the street, so we're not impacting them. But through the design, we are widening their sidewalk a little bit to improve the conditions so it appears seamless on both sides. 
Um, and as we're getting specific repairs, we still have some tabletops and some uh, raised crosswalks. Uh, to show you the official drawing, here you go, um, where we show the extents of the wide enemy location. It's a three foot wide. Any questions or comments from the commission? Any questions or comments from the PIC staff or the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number six? I'll make a motion to approve a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening and location of Decatur Street as read it to the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. Moving on to public hearing number seven on a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening, relocation, and extension of the existing right of way lines of Moulton Street, Public Way, Charlestown, located between Quarry Street and Moulton Way. Uh, this was introduced as new business on January 27th, 2022, and is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening and Relocation Plan. Moulton Way, Charlestown, one sheet dated, dated January 5th, 2022. Would the presenter please state their name and walk us through the changes. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. And this is the Moulton, uh, Moulton Street or Moulton Way private way. Uh, Moulton Street. So Moulton, Moulton Way is a, a, a funky little animal um, because it's it, portion of it is public, then it transitions to private. So it's public to this point here and then it transitions to private. So for this action today, we're looking for the widening location of both the public portion of that and the private portion of that. But our goal in the, in the, in the coming, probably as the project moves forward, is to lay this out entirely as a public way and it's being designed and constructed to public way standards. Um, but we need to coordinate and work with our abutter to do the discontinuance of the private way so then we can lay it out as a public way. But for today's action, which is temporary in nature, is the widening relocation of the private way, uh, which I believe is on this drawing here. And you can see this is the private, existing private way is this here, and then this is the future private way, the widening relocation of the private way. Todd, did I miss something, or did the chair introduce the public part of Moulton Street. Uh, no, I think we're on the, we should be on public hearing number seven, which is the widening relocation extension of Moulton Street, the public way. Um, I, I believe that was read incorrectly. Um, so, okay, yeah. so for the public, for yeah. the widening relocation of the public way, it's this section right here. Yes, thank you. Yep. Sorry for the confusion. Any questions or comments from the commission? Any comments or questions from the PIC staff or the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number seven? I'll make a motion to approve a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening relocation extension of Holton Street, the public way, uh, as read into record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. Um, moving on to public hearing number eight on a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening, relocation, and extension of the existing right of way lines of Moulton Way, private way, open to public travel, Charlestown, located between Decatur Street and Moulton Street. Uh, this was introduced as new business on January 27, 2022, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening, Relocation, and Extension Plan, Moulton Way, Private Way, Open to Public Travel, Charlestown, one sheet dated January 5, 2022. The presenter, please state their name and uh, speak to these changes. Uh, John Schmidt, the slightly confused civil engineer from Niche Engineering, and I apologize for that last he uh, hearing. But private Moulton Way, the private way, this is the section of Moulton Way that will be extended uh, as a private way to allow us a thorough, uh, a through drive roadway um, from Vine to Decatur. Um, the goal here in the future is to discontinue the private way and lay out the street entirely as a public way. But for today's actions, it's just a widening and relocation of this private way. Any questions or comments from the commission? 
Any questions or comments from the PIC staff or members of the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number eight? Make a motion to approve a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co. LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening, relocation, and extension of Molten Way, private way, open to public travel, as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. On to public hearing number nine on a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co. LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening and relocation of existing right-of-way lines of Samuel Morris Way, private way open to public travel, Charlestown, located on its southerly side between Decatur Street and Corey Street. This was introduced as new business on January 27, 2022, and is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening and Relocation Plan, Samuel Morris Way, private way open to public travel, Charlestown. One sheet dated January 5th, 2022. Would the presenter state their name and walk us through the change? Good morning, John Schmidt, with Mitch Engineering. Sam, Samuel Morris Way's existing private way that extends from Quarry Street to Decatur Street. Our goal here is to widen and, relocation, widen and relocate the section that abuts the phase one development. And in the future, we will widen and relocate it. It's entire on the, on the uh, northerly side as the future phase comes in. And at that time, the goal is hopefully to lay this out as a public way. It's being designed and constructed to public way standards. But today's action is simply the, uh, the widening and relocation of the private way as indicated on this drawing here. Any questions? Hearing no comments or questions from the commission, uh, any comments or questions from the PIC staff or the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number nine? I'll make a motion to approve a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co. LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the widening location of Samuel Morris Way as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. All right, moving on to public hearing number 10. On a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co. LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the making of specific repairs within the following roadways in Charlestown, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, street lighting infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, street trees, landscaping, street furniture, bike racks, bollards, driveway curb cuts, and raised crosswalks. Medford Street on its southerly side, generally between Tufts Street and Quarry Street, Corey Street between Medford Street and Moulton Street, Tuff Street from Medford Street to a point south of Walford Way, Decatur Street generally between Vine Street and Samuel Morris Way, Vine Street on its northeasterly side northwest of Decatur Street, Moulton Street between Corey Street and Moulton Way, Moulton Way, private way between Decatur Street and Moulton Street, Samuel Morris Way, private way between Decatur Street and Corey Street. This was introduced as new business on January 27, 2022, and is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan, Bunker Hill Housing Redevelopment, Quarry Street, Medford Street, Tuff Street, Decatur Street, Vine Street, Moulton Street, Samuel Morris Way, Charlestown, 10 sheets dated January 25th, 2022. Uh, would the presenter please state their name and walk us through the proposed specific repairs? Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering, and uh, I will walk through this is the overview of all the streets that are being uh, will have specific repairs, as read just read in the introduction, um, and I will walk through each sheet um, just to give an overview. So on uh, this is on Corey Street, and on Corey Street we are widening and relocating. Uh, we are reconstructing the sidewalk on the project side. So from Medford Street to this area here, we will be reconstructing the, the roadway and sidewalks to meet with the complete street standards with all the items that were indicated in the introduction. And then down here where we abut, uh, we cross over and we widen and relocate it along uh, the future building, building F, I believe. Um, the next sheet uh, is the widening relocation of Medford Street. Now new business, the conversation was, had, uh, was raised about providing a tabletop across uh, the intersections here at Tufts and Medford and Tufts and I'm sorry, Medford and Corey. We had a meeting earlier this week with Amy 
uh, Cording and Todd Limey um, to discuss the, uh, I think actually I believe it was last week we had a meeting to discuss the improvements here. Um, and we, uh, what we can propose now is a tabletop on Tuff Street, I'm sorry, a raised crosswalk at Tufts at Medford Street, but at Quarry Street and Medford Street, we don't have adequate uh, clearances to provide a tabletop at uh, a raised crosswalk at this time because of the clearance, it would be less than a 20 foot width, which is a minimum standard. Uh, we also are providing the, the curb alignment in its permanent location. Um, that was part of the conversation too. Um, I don't believe uh, the city has seen these drawings yet, but we are working with them to review and re receive comment, and we will not be issuing any mylars until the city agencies are satisfied with this final layout. Uh, moving along, uh, Tuff Street, again, we're, we're constructing the new sidewalks complete to the complete street standards where it abuts the project. On Decatur Street, again, from uh, Vine Street up into San Morris Way, we are reconstructing on our side the sidewalk to complete street standards. And we are also reconstructing the sidewalk across the street um, to, to provide a bump out here, as well as new street lighting and uh, other improvements. But that sidewalk isn't wide enough to incorporate pavers and other improvements. So uh, it will be a new sidewalk, more, more conventional in, in, uh, in design and construction. Uh, on Moulton Street Way, <laughs> we are reconstructing um, the sidewalk on the project side to meet the complete street standards where we make, where we where we have adequate space, as well as on the southern side, southerly side of Moulton Way. There's a section here that we just don't have the, the clearances to do the pavers, um, the street trees, but we're providing those improvements wherever it is possible. Um, and here on Sam Morris Way, on our Phase one side, we'll be providing, constructing complete street guidelines with pavers and sidewalks and street trees. We will be providing a concrete sidewalk on the northerly side, but as you can see by that green line, this curb will be relocated in the future, so the sidewalk is temporary in nature, and when the future phase comes along, it will be replaced with the conventional, I mean, sorry, with the complete street guidelines type of sidewalk. And here's some detail sheets. So, uh, I'm willing to dive into any questions you may have. There's a lot here and there's a lot of coordination, a lot of phasing involved. Um, we work closely with Public Works, Boston Water and Sewer, Boston Street Lighting to uh, ensure that everyone is on board with what we're proposing here. There are still a few minor items to iron out, such as the Medford Street design, but we're all confident that we will get to a solution that satisfy the city agencies as well as our development teams goals. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the commission? I think my only comment is, is all these plans said future line, proposed line, and uh, after our last, you know, eight actions, uh, it's now the actual line. Uh, so just when we hit Mylar to just have that as being the right, the actual right of way line on the specific repair plans, because it is now that's the new line of the street as of 10 minutes ago. I got you. Yes. Actually, on the mylars, would you like to see the future green line just so we remember what we talked about? Totally up to Todd. Okay. Um, that's just a conversation this, for another day. Yeah, just the uh, just the the future and proposed stuff is now uh, now. Yes. Yeah. We'll show the we'll show the approved right away lines as of today as existing conditions on our. On our mylars. All right. Uh, John, this is Joe Callahan, property management. Has the Boston Fire Department raised any issues or concerns um, with the uh, access if it's necessary? Matt, um, I'm not aware of that, of any action, any concerns with them. We've met all the requirements. The 20 foot width clearance is what they, uh, what they look for. We are providing hydrants with, you know, within 100 feet of the Siamese connections or maintaining the hydrants that are out there. Um, I don't, I, I give them a call, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Uh, I, I don't have anything specific. I just, um, yeah, I, I feel better if you gave them a call and just, just make sure that, that there are no uh, uh, concerns or issues from yeah. their perspective. Understood. I, and I know that they'll, they're reviewing these drawings as these building drawings go to them for approval. As well. 
Hi, John. Um, this is Denise from Boston Water and Sewer. It's just a friendly request to continue to work with our design departments and engineering customer services on any outstanding site plans and anything with the roadway design plans. Yes, and uh, I want to say Addison's been very helpful. We've had a couple conversations with him, um, and he's been a pleasure to work with. Thank you. Okay, right, thank you, John. John, Hi, John. Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. I'm Sarah. Oh, Sarah, you go first. Um, yes, mine is just a graphical question on the Tuff Street specific repair plan. Um, the copy that I am looking at separate from this mm -hmm. um, shows um, the pedestrian ramps rendered with the brick hatch. And so we just want to confirm that those will be um, constructed in concrete um, when the time comes. Yes, all ramps will be poured concrete. Great, perfect. And if that edit could just be made as it yep. goes towards my Lars. Yes, we'll make sure that's corrected. Thank you. Great. Yeah, I see what you're talking about right here. John, uh, the, I have two points, one minor, one maybe overarching. Uh, I will key off on Sarah's comments on these plans itself. If you can zoom in to the location of uh, Medford and Tuft Street, that new crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Right, so that, that's on the, on the left, um, Yeah, on the left hand side. Basically, yeah. I've seen a few examples where you are proposing a new crosswalk that may not be within the pedestrian path of travel. If you're walking up and down Midford Street, okay, that is where the today's crosswalk is and you will have to sort of go right to cross the street. So I'm going to assume that that type of uh, design, Sarah, sorry, design Kama is okay with you, Sarah, where the crosswalks are not within the natural path of travel for a person. John, is that John, is that um, raised crossing new yes. to the plans? Okay. Yeah, so this, um, this came out of a meeting we had last that's week. That's me, that's me, right? <laughs> uh, so like, right, we want, it, we want these raised uh, in the future to prevent cut throughs, et cetera, um, through this and provide a, a better pedestrian experience. So yes, the, the crosswalk has to kick in because the road has to come up um, to make it raised. Uh, with the widening of these streets, I think that the pedestrian path of travel will be as uh, you know, severe as, as you think it, you know, as it might appear, uh, because where that red line is on the opposite side is now kind of uh, the, the back of that sidewalk. Okay, thanks. I think some, I think some adjustments maybe with the brick cuber strip could be adjusted to yeah. incorporate, yeah, incorporate that cross it, that new addition. Um, but I'm sure we can work that out um, offline. Yeah, this was 11th hour for me, so he put yep. this on, right, like to show that he did it, um, but right, like the details are all coming with Mylar. And then we'll be sharing the 95% construction drawings with everyone, so you'll have another pass at it as well. Sounds good. Uh, ouch, okay, uh, can you also zoom in on the Corey Street and Samuel Morse Way intersection? Uh, I forget exactly where I saw that thing. Corey and Samuel Morse. Um, okay, so we're, we're here. Yep. So, yeah. If you can again, that same crosswalk issue, alignment of the crosswalk as it aligns with, with the natural path of travel. So, if you just can take a look at that and yep. check with Sarah to make sure that we are, because here. Yeah. The Medford, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go, the same, same thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, there are quite a few. So, just take a look at it from uh, the ADA perspective of someone visually impaired that is trying to go down the street and suddenly... Okay. Well, I messaged with Steve and clearly understood. We will take gotcha. a look at this to see if there's a way we can scooch these towards the intersection while still getting the grade work. You got it, sir. And just look at the whole set, okay? Just do a blanket review. Uh, second part, John, yep. absolutely excited over the fact that you and your team and the petitioners are building these things to the city's new standards of complete streets, which require the new trees and all of that good stuff. Uh, what are your thoughts about who is going to maintain this? Uh, is the petitioner entering into a overall maintenance program for not just this work, but for the whole project? Your thoughts on that? I will let my client or legal represent, representative speak to that. I was trying not to tag Miss Brady uh, <laughs> on it, but, <laughs> or Miss Burton, but please don't be shy. 
Uh, this is David Linhart from Colson. I'm happy to jump in unless someone's going to beat me to the chase. David, go right ahead. Thank you very much. Great. Um, so, of course, uh, you know, it's been talked about that a bit of the challenge um, for a phase project like this is to make it look like it's all constructed at the same time, you know, even though it'll be over time. So, um, and, and you, you sort of mentioned thinking about the full site. Um, so the, you know, one, one thought was to uh, take an approach of a master LMI as opposed to doing individual phase by phase LMIs. Um, and, and, then, uh, and then the other thought was uh, as much as possible deliver city standard improvements. And, um, and so it may turn out that, um, you know, an eventual uh, master license would, would not have a very long list of, of elements that are maintained by the, by the project, by the developer. Um, and, and we'll we'll continue to work with Todd and with Chong to finalize that. Baby, my I'll cut to the punchline. Work backwards, yeah. just to in the interest of time. What would be massively desirable is that you enter into an LMI now before we have to find these things in the registrar, where it is understood that this is a multi-phase. Okay, so the LMI will make a reference to the fact that it is the start of a master. LMI, but this is phase one. That way, we've started the ball rolling at this point, and we will just amend the that LMI with phase two, phase three, phase four, etc. I think that might be the most prudent way for you to manage a project of this nature, which is quite similar to what the commission has managed with multi other multi phase projects. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for that feedback. And I guess the you know the other piece to uh, to drill down on is. Um, how how much of the how, how many elements are going to be handed back to the city uh, because they're city standard versus uh, you know the ongoing maintenance staying with the developer? Uh, yes, uh, I'm sure Mr. Schmidt and the team is well aware of what are the standard stuff that requires maintenance, and I'll give you right off the top of my head. We, you plant a tree, we love trees, but trees are the responsibility of the person who plants the tree. Okay, I promise you, I'm not quite good at going and watering a tree. So these are the things that you all need to put for the betterment of those who are going to live in this amazing pro property. So uh, I'm not asking, I don't think we're asking you to rebuild our side box unless you're putting gold-plated side box, which you're not. So I think you're in a good place, John. Sorry, David. Standard stuff, not side box made out of concrete, but anything other than what we call basic materials would be the responsibility of a project of this nature. Yeah, so we'll that, work with the project team to determine what elements may need to be covered by an LMI, such as trees, permeable pavers, um, concrete sidewalks, which may have structural soil beneath them, which I believe is included in this project uh, and that type of thing. But we can uh, uh, talk about all of that um, before the, the, the building proceeds to building permits. I think that one thing I'd, I'd add is that if this is phase one, right, and we're signing a master LMI is typically where we list out all of the things that are included in that LMI. So if there are other things that are going to appear in different phases that did not appear in this one, we might want to add that into the LMI so that we're only adding exhibits and we're not adding this new thing um, in the future, wherever possible. Yeah, happy to finalize those, those details. and I, I, uh, Todd, thanks for jumping in as well, because I, I know we started on uh, that list of what are the elements that actually would be in an LMI versus uh, items that get handed over. Sure. Thank you, David. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Any questions or comments from PIC staff or members of the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number 10? I'll make a motion to approve a joint petition by Bunker Hill Land Co. LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the making of specific repairs in Medford Street, Quarry Street, Tuff Street, Decatur Street, Vine Street, Moulton Street, Moulton Way, and Samuel Morris Way as read into the record by the chair, contingent on approval of final mylars. And uh, an LMI, I guess. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? 
All right, so moved. Um, thank you very much for the, the team for, uh, for, for, for all of that, uh, all of those uh, presentations and the, the detail there. Um, we are going to continue with the public hearings uh, and complete those and then uh, try to go back to the utility poll hearings uh, once we've completed the public hearings. But uh, so with that, um, we'll be moving on to public hearing 11 on a petition by Seaport NP Title Holder LLC for the granting of a projection license for the installation of canopies and awnings over portions of the sidewalk within the following public ways in South Boston. Summer Street on its northeasterly side at address number 350, generally southeast of Boston Wharf Road. Congress Street on its southwesterly side, generally southeast of Boston Wharf Road. This was introduced as new business on January 27, 2022. Uh, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division License Plan for Canopy, Summer Street, Congress Street, 350 Summer Street, Boston. Two sheets dated December 22nd, 2021. Uh, would the presenters please introduce themselves and their affiliations and walk us through uh, what is being uh, discussed here. Good morning, members of the commission. My name is Jody Sanchez from Boston and Stores. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the petitioner Seaport NP Title Holder, LLC. I'm joined by Ali Ribeiro, the petitioner, and John Schmidt of Niche Engineering. Um, we're here today, as, as you mentioned, uh, to respectfully request a canopy license for certain canopies along Summer and Congress Streets relating to Block N of the Seaport Square project. Uh, the Block N project will involve the construction of a 17-story uh, mixed-use building containing office and retail uses above portions of a garage currently under construction on Blocks N and P. And I'll now turn it over to, to John or Ali to discuss the plan. Um, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. I'll speak. Uh, I'll speak to the plan. Just give me a moment. Here. Okay. So we have. Um, this is on Summer Street, where we. Let me just zoom in here. This is on Summer Street, where we proposed um, one canopy, which is in the, uh, the center here, and it projects out six almost seven feet and there's still three and a half feet remaining so it's less than the two-thirds requirement and it's about 17 feet above the sidewalk it is heat traced and interior drained and the other six items you see here are, are uh, retractable awnings that are fabric and material and 10 feet above the sidewalk the other action on congress street is one canopy that projects out at the maximum about 12.6 feet um, across the sidewalk which is still less than the two thirds of the sidewalk width. Uh, it is, uh, and it is re uh, heat traced and internally drained. I'm oh, sorry, it's 12.6 feet above the sidewalk and it projects seven feet out into the sidewalk, it, but it's uh, seven feet of the 13 foot sidewalk. So it's less than two thirds of the sidewalk width, which you can see right here. And then the other items are retractable fabric awnings um, that are attached to the building. That's it. One, that's this one here, this one here, and this one here. So the canopies themselves are greater than 10 feet, less than two thirds projection into the sidewalk, heat traced and internally drained. The awnings, which are typically dealt with through a, um, a license through the, through the administrative portion of, you know, of the permitting process are indicated in this plan um, just to, to identify and share with you what's proposed here. Also, the project uh, received the building uh, foundation permit about a year and a half ago and is ready to pull the building permit. So this action, necessary, we need this action approved as soon as possible in order to uh, pull the building permit and continue with the building construction. And any questions? Any questions or comments from members of the commission? Any questions or comments from the PIC staff or the public? Uh, no, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number 11? Make a motion to approve a petition by Seaport NP Title Holder LLC for the granting of a projection license in Summer Street and Congress Street is read into the record by the chair. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Moving on, public hearing number 12 on a petition by IQHQ20 Overland LLC for the granting of a projection license for the installation of a canopy over a portion of the sidewalk within Overland Street Public Way, Boston Proper, located on its southwesterly side at address number 20, generally southeast of David Ortiz Drive. 
This has introduced its new business on January 27th, 2022, and is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division License Plan 20 Overland Street Fenway, one sheet dated December 15th, 2021. Uh, would the presenters please introduce themselves and their affiliations and walk us through uh, what is proposed. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Lisa Chow with VHB. Uh, we are joined today um, with, by um, Will Ashton and Kim Tai with IQHQ, uh, Matt Fitzgerald from Sullivan and Worcester, Caitlin Greenwood from Margulies Peruzzi Architect, and Greg Sawarda from CBRE. Um, on behalf of IQHQ 20 Overland Street, LLC, the applicant, we are requesting the approval of a can canopy license plan um, on Overland Street. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So the proposed canopy is um, for an existing entrance on the existing 20 Overland Street building. Um, the ex existing building is located on the um, southerly side of Overland Street between David Ortiz um, Drive and Brookline Avenue. Um, the proposed canopy it will connect back into the existing building column structure and project approximately 3.3 feet over the property line. Um, at the new business hearing, I mistakenly said that the sidewalk width here is approximately 15 feet, but it is closer to 18 feet. So the uh, canopy projection is going to be less than two thirds of the sidewalk width. Um, vertical clearance is approximately 14.5 feet and um, the storm drain will be internally drained and heat traced. Are there any questions at this time? Uh, can you confirm that there will be an eventual uh, like specific repair for the front of this building? Right, like this is gonna, they're doing more in the, currently in the front of this building to, to rehab it in the future or no? Um, so there, th this, this is, um, we'll confirm with the, with the developer and owner regarding this portion, but um, as we've been coordinating with um, Sarah, I came up that there are plans intended for 109 Brookline Avenue, and um, there will be a specific repair plan intended for that project, and the limits will be confirmed during that PIC process. Yeah, I mean, because right to Sarah's point, this is kind of an accessibility um, issue uh, out here right now, the way that this this kind of sidewalk functions. So, uh, you know, happy to get a mechanic, but just making sure that we are going to make the sidewalk better at some point. Noted, and we will follow up with um, PIC staff and commission um, once once that gets flushed out. Lisa, on the Lisa on yes. the canopy, is there going to be any when I say sign a building name sign or a number or something that is lit up, or is it just shelter over my head so that I don't get wet? Um, my 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 belief right now is that it's just the canopy and no signage. Gotcha. Thank you, Lisa. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Any questions or comments from the PAC staff or members of the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number 12? Make a motion to approve a petition by IQHQ 20 Overland LLC for the granting of a projection license at Overland Street as read into a record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Thank Moving you. Moving on. Public hearing number 13 on a petition by Walk Hill Owner LLC for the acceptance of two pedestrian easements adjacent to the following public ways in West Roxbury. Walk Hill Street on its southwesterly side at address is number address numbers 283 and 289, the Canterbury Street and American Legion Highway. Canterbury Street on its southeasterly side at address numbers 576 and 578, southwest of Walk Hill Street. Uh, this is introduced as new business on January 27, 2022, and is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan 283 and 289 Walk Hill Street, AKA 576 and 578 Canterbury Street, Roslindale, one sheet dated January 6, 2022. Uh, would the presenters please introduce themselves and walk us through the uh, easements? 
Yeah, good, uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, uh, Attorney Nick Sazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, uh, here on behalf of the petitioner, uh, Walk Hill Owner LLC. Uh, with me today from Walk Hill Owner LLC is Eric Barnes, who's our project manager. Our civil engineer is Steve Sawyer from DCI. And we have Rob Del Salvio, who is our uh, architect from Embark Studios. Uh, Mr. Chair, I know you weren't on the hearing uh, a few weeks ago for new business, and it's been a few weeks. Would you like me to go through just some brief background on the project itself, or do you? Yeah, I think a quick, quick, a quick okay. overview plus any changes that resulted from um, that last uh, uh, meeting would be great. Understood. Thank you. So uh, just again, some quick background. Steve, if you could go to the next slide, I think actually we have these out of order um, just to show that. Yeah, this is perfect. Thanks, Steve. So this is the site, uh, it's 289 Walk Hill and Rosendale, as was read into the record. Uh, it's a combined land area of about 87,600 uh, 87, square feet. Uh, it's bounded to the northeast by Walk Hill Street, to the northwest by Canterbury Street, uh, and to the southeast by American Legion Highway, uh, which you can again see here uh, on the screen. Uh, the site previously consisted of single story retail commercial uses. It was a flower shop in a small restaurant. There were also a few single family residential buildings on the site, and those have all since been demolished. Um, Steve, if you could go back to the first slide, uh, that actually showed the proposed project um, in its current uh, iteration. So it's a multifamily residential development. It's about 118,000 square feet. Uh, it's a three and four story building, and it's 106 residential uh, uh, apartment units with 126 parking spaces. So what's in, fo uh, in front of the, the commission again um, today is those kind of upgrades and, and transformation of the site to enhance the sidewalk experience, the public realm, um, new landscaping, street trees, and other streetscape improvements in and around the site uh, that come with you know a, a project of this size uh, that uh, went through large project review, BCDC review, uh, and zoning approval. So a lot of uh, the, the specific repair upgrades that you'll see in one minute, the pedestrian easement requirements, uh, those all came about as a result of this lengthy Article 80 outreach administrative uh, city agency um, and review process. So this is kind of the culmination of a lot of that work to get to this point. Um, so with that, Steve, I can toss it over to you. I believe uh, the pedestrian easements were, were first um, okay. on the okay. agenda and I, I Mr. Chair you had asked if there any, had any been uh, anything from the new business hearing I don't recall there being anything specific called out for the pet easement uh, easements during the, the new business hearing but um, I can defer to, to Steve on that to go through it thank you Steve all yours uh, good good morning or afternoon uh, Steve Sawyer uh, design consultancy so um, as part of the uh, actually as part of the transport transportation access plan agreement. Um, the project ended up widening the sidewalks to, to meet the complete streets requirements. Uh, with that, we had to encroach a bit into the private, um, the private property. So on Canterbury, we have a pedestrian easement on, um, on, on this frontage to create the, uh, the widening of the sidewalks. And then on Walk Hill, uh, we widen the sidewalk at this location uh, for the uh, for the uh, complete street cross-sectional width. Uh, also, what we did is, as part of the access plan agreement is providing a blue bike station. Uh, so we notched out to include that in the, um, in the pedestrian easement. And then also, I think as part of the Article 80 review, there was a, a condition that we provide public access and public seating uh, along the Canterbury Brook. So this notch here, is a permeable paver area with tables and seating uh, to for a place for pedestrians to, to rest and view the view the um, view the stream. So that covers the the pet easement. Uh, are there any questions, or should I jump right forward into the specific repair? I think we can. We'll stay on the pet easement um, okay. and then move on to yeah. that as in the order. Um, any any comments or questions from the commission? Yeah, can you extend it, the Pettysman, to the end of your property out towards American Legion? You pull up short of, of your property line, just send it over. Um, so I guess what happens here, there's a head wall here. We can extend it, but we're not widening. At this point, you can't widen the sidewalk because you, you have a, a head wall at this location over at Canterbury Brook. 
so we're um, we can indicate it wider but we're not uh, we won't be widening at th this location here we wouldn't be widening uh, due to the constriction of the, the head wall okay. yeah can you ex can you uh, I'm most concerned with the small triangle um, that is currently sidewalk at the corner um, that's on private property can you extend the easement area and just leave the built condition as you currently propose it sure okay thank you so you're talking in this area here? Yes. Yep. Yeah, just okay. keep, keep that line going yeah, straight. Yes, yeah, send the line straight out to the, your, your red property line. Got it, yep. Yeah, we can do that. Yes. Any additional questions or comments from the commission? Any uh, questions or comments from the PIC staff and the public? Oh, uh, we have a, a hand raised, Lisa. Yes, hello, can you hear me? We can. Wonderful, uh, thank you. Um, uh, I'm a, a resident um, very near this property in Eastern Rosendale um, uh, and co-lead the um, Mount Hope Canterbury Amer uh, Neighborhood Association and also part of the American Legion Quarter Coalition because there's a lot of pocket neighborhoods uh, all along American Legion. Um, so, uh, I have my, my questions and requests have to do with the American Legion uh, public realm side. Um, and I, uh, I hope everyone here knows that American Legion is not a, a highway, it's a city owned road um, with a top speed mostly of 30 miles an hour. Um, and I, you know, I, I saw that uh, in the, uh, you know, what's being discussed here is, is not yet American Legion, but there's um, there's a, a 280 foot uh, sidewalk. Um, the intersection with Walk Hill uh, across American Legion is a uh, it's it's a school zone uh, crosswalk for the Haley Pilot School K through eight. Um, it's a crosswalk uh, going towards the Boston Nature Center uh, in Mattapan. Um, and then it's also that and the sidewalk along American Legion uh, is a route, a walking route to uh, the business areas uh, along American Legion. Um, and so I have, let me see, them, uh, I have some questions. I'll read them quickly and comments. Um, okay, so Ameri the American Legion side sidewalk is along a narrow, I believe, we believe, <laughs> is along a narrow city-owned strip um, abutting the proper, this property's border, um, which covers both sides of the uh, open Canterbury Brook. Um, and so it doesn't, does it officially abut the property Who's going to be responsible for shoveling the sidewalk along American Legion? Um, any of my questions that isn't in your jurisdiction, um, please, you know, please let me know and work with whoever it is within the jurisdiction because it, at this point, it's, uh, you know, it was already approved uh, pre-COVID, um, but uh, there's. There's definitely pedestrian, cyclist, uh, safe transportation, safety, public realm uh, problems that need to be resolved. So, who's going to be responsible for shoveling the sidewalk? Um, uh, let's see. Will the improvements include uh, the Walk Hill American Legion intersection, which is one of the most dangerous intersections in our neighborhood? And as I said, it's a very important um, walking route. Um, the school and other places. Um, uh, next one is that there's a rusted guardrail that um, is all along next to the side, the American Legion sidewalk, uh, between the sidewalk and the open brook. Um, and the rusted guardrail needs to come down. Um, the traffic calming road design that we finally have along American Legion has significantly reduced speeding and crashes. And you know, it is green belt protection overlay district designated with those protections. And, um, you know, it finally, <laughs> the, our, our, our road is being treated as such. 
um, instead of the you know the misnomer highway. So um, so you know what can be done to make sure that the guardrail comes down. And the last thing is that when there was a lot a lot of community engagement regarding this process, this project, um, which is massively oversized. Um, you know, it's surrounded by uh, primarily single and, and two family um, neighborhoods. Um, this project will bring a lot of uh, additional traffic uh, to an area that has a, a very little public transportation. Um, there's only one bus on the American Legion side that runs five and a half days a week and stops at 7 p.m. So there's there was and is a lot of concern about what impact the extra traffic in this car dependent community would be. So the original developer um, uh, promised a shuttle bus uh, for the tenants and also that would be accessible to neighbors uh, to use to get to Forest Hills to lessen the need for cars. But uh, since the project has resurfaced, um, we haven't heard anything about the shuttle bus. So uh, yeah, I'd appreciate some responses to these issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll, I'll maybe there's, there's quite a few topics in there. And so I'll maybe start by asking the proponents to um, speak to uh, two things that I, I think are, are most directly tied to, to um, what was just raised. One is around any uh, additional mitigation that's been uh, or is planned to be undertaken as part of this uh, this effort that may impact uh, aspects of the public right of way, such as pedestrian crossings that are uh, outside of the uh, specific parcels in question. Um, the second piece is uh, I'm seeing if I'm correctly reading the drawing that the, the property line is shown as uh, terminating sort of somewhere over the brook, um, but. I am sort of interested in whether the proponents believe that the sidewalks uh, along American Legion um, that are most proximate to this uh, project site are, in fact, uh, part of the parcel that is uh, owned by the uh, proponent or whether they uh, belong to somebody else. So maybe maybe start there. Yeah, um, so yeah, this, this red line um, is based on our, PLR, our you know, professional land surveyor uh, reconciliation of the boundary line so it's actually not that the bottom of the brook it's just slightly probably a quarter of the way up the banking um, one thing that I'll get into I guess as we get into specific repairs what uh, what we just um, closed the public uh, public hearing for conservation commission and we have a basically as part of that work as part of the conservation commission we're going to be this entire area of the Canterbury Brook will be, um, we're gonna be providing invasive removal and native planting in that area. So what it, what basically surfaced since our introduction of this new business is along this banking behind the guardrail, the plan is to be um, invasive removal with planting here. Um, there's no work proposed in the sidewalk, all the work is behind the guardrail. Additionally, what the, the Conservation Commission asked for was a four foot high um, chain link fence that will be vinyl coated um, on our property that we would be maintaining. So as part of the specific repairs, I'm not sure, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not proposing any work on the sidewalk, but a very aggressive um, invasive removal and planting plan on the bank that I can add to the you know, add to the mylars as far as the landscape plan and the work area right here. <clears throat> um, so that's um, that's where that's new. That would be new information. I was planning to present that with this specific repair. I have the landscape plan to share uh, as we move forward in the presentation. Yeah, it seems like, Mr. Chair, that a lot of the questions from Ms. Beatman may may have dealt more with specific repair uh, instances. I mean. Um, you know, I, I think Steve, our, our project, our, our, you know, at the end of the day, our property line does not go all the way out to touch American Legion Highway or that sidewalk. So that was not part of our mitigation 
for the project. We've also entered into the TAP already and have signed the TAP with BTD. I don't think that was part of it, which is why we're happy to, as Ms. Cording and Mr. Lyman asked, to move the easement all the way, you know, the pet easement all the way to the corner there. But our property line doesn't extend all that way. So we're kind of a little bit, you know, cornered in as to what, you know, how far over we can go and what we're willing to do to get to that point. So I think, you know, Ms. Beedman's brought up a lot of good points. She's been a very good advocate for this area for a long time, and we appreciate her comments. We've tried to incorporate as many of them as we could on her end, and I think we've done a pretty good job. But some of them, some of them we're just, we're not able to do. But we've tried to do a lot. And, you know, as Mr. Sawyer mentioned, the brook and beautifying the brook is in our cooperation agreement. It's in the TAP. And, you know, I think we're looking to be, to really, you know, bring the brook back to where it should be and not really be an area that's overflowing with trash. And, you know, it's really a choke point for the most part. You honestly wouldn't know it was there if you drove by it, I don't think, right, Ms. Beedman? So the hope is to work and to use this project to get it to a better point. But, you know, some of the things on American Legion Highway are, you know, frankly weren't really within our scope and of what we were looking to do with the project for, you know, a couple of different reasons. A couple of things there, right? Like, right, I understand everything that you just explained, but this is an abutting sidewalk to you just like Walk Hill and Canterbury, where you are making improvements that are beyond your property line. I think that there's a couple of things here, right? Like that sidewalk on American Legion is an asphalt sidewalk and should probably be a cement concrete one. You pull up short of the ramps that may or may not be compliant, which is fine. But I think that that sidewalk, I agree that the guardrail is something that should probably be dealt with. But that American Legion, just because there's a lot of stuff between you and them, you abut it the same as everything else. But I do think that we should also be very clear from a, you know, a snow perspective that you're the abutter, that it's your property and then the right of way of American Legion making you the abutter. So while there might be a lot of stuff growing there, that's your sidewalk from a, you know, a snow and ice removal perspective. But I think that like it's being treated as different than the other sidewalks that abut you. And that I think I'm a little bit unclear on as to why the rest of them get improved, but this one doesn't. Yeah, yeah, Ms. Courtney, I'll defer to Steve on this technically, but, you know, we wouldn't be offering any pet easement on American Legion Highway because our property doesn't extend to there. Most developments, right, like improve the sidewalks around the site, regardless of whether or not they require pedestrian easement. It's because, right, there was nothing here before and the guardrail and the asphalt sidewalk were maybe, you know, a remnant of that fact. But when you put a whole new development here and you clean that up, then, you know, now you're, it's you who's seen from that side of American Legion. So I think it's just more that I do feel like we've kind of forgotten about American Legion. And I think that your property being an abutter there will be much more noticeable once you do clear out all that stuff. And it's really just you behind the back of sidewalk there and, you know, maybe with a brook. But I just want to make sure that, right, like, I don't know that the city has any plans to do any work right here. So when you come anew, I think it would be desirable to have all the sidewalks bounding a project of this side reconstructed. And just, Amy, I will jump in and say there are, there is work planned by the city on improving the crossings at American Legion as follow on work with some of the traffic calming that's happened. And that includes this intersection, but it is very much focused on the crossings, not on the linear course of the sidewalk along American Legion. Right. It's that, it's that connection. I think that is, it would be nice to make as, as we, as we go down this strip so that that crossing will lead to a cement concrete accessible sidewalk that is new. And then if you're out there clearing snow and ice, it'll be a much nicer environment to do that on. So Mr. Chair and Ms. Corning, to be clear, you, the snow removal is, is, is one issue. You would like us to continue the specific repairs to, to continue along American, the sidewalk of American Legion highway for the length of our property line at that, at that corner or, or down pretty much down all the way to the end of the property line where our property line fits American Legion. 
Yeah, and you can stay clear of the the crossing, right? Because right, yep. that, that's something that's already Good. being. Yep. Um, okay. But yeah, the, the snow and ice thing that you get, just get that by being the abutter. No, I, I, we understand that. I don't think that's an issue at all. Um, I think it was more just to be clear to be clear as to what you're asking for on the American Legion side with regard to sidewalks uh, improvements. Because again, that wasn't you know that's not shown on our specific repairs. I just I want to make sure we're clear. Yeah, I think it would be re replacement of that asphalt sidewalk with a cement concrete sidewalk, um, and then to uh, th right like if uh, the guardrail is probably there because of the the grade behind the sidewalk, uh, it's probably required. Uh, but if yeah, to the point of uh, uh, that raised before, if it was not um, rusted and from a, a, a different era, uh, that would also be fantastic. Okay, um, Mr. So not to moderate, Mr. Chair, but Mr. Sawyer, uh, Steve, do we have any issues with that from on our end, other than obviously financial? But is there any um, issue on, on our end from from making that happen? No, we, we there's technically I don't see any issue. Um, one thing there's some we, we need to be careful of. And I know there's we'll have to look at the there's some large diameter trees we need to take into consideration as we cross the sidewalk crosses behind behind the two you know behind those. We'll just have to look at that. Okay, so I, I believe, Ms. Cording, we would then would just incorporate that into an updated specific repairs plan. Is that correct? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay, we can incorporate that. Thank you. Um, I see a raised hand from Mr. Yoder. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a follow up. Um, thank you for those responses. And uh, we do appreciate everything uh, the developer has proposed for uh, along all the work along the uh, brook. It's uh, really going to be make quite a, a wonderful change to uh, the, the public uh, realm along here. Uh, but I, the two things, uh, since the question we did uh, uh, speak a little about the. Uh, the intersection of Walk Hill and American Legion and improvements being there. I actually, since we're having these speaking tours going on right now with the mayor, is there money proposed now in the budget for these repairs this year? It's always been a problem uh, for uh, Rosdale and Eastern Rosdale. There's never any money for these repairs. So if that isn't in the budget, we'd be happy to speak up for it. Uh, that's one question. And then just to follow up on one of Ms. Beaton's uh, other questions, um, I'm just uh, curious about the uh, status of the uh, shuttle bus idea. Thank you. Nick, do you want to take the shuttle bus or should I? Yeah, I didn't know if Mr. Chair, if anybody wanted from the city wanted to answer the first question as to the, the I think Mr. Chair, you had mentioned that um, there was, um, there will be improvements along that intersection as part of uh, something the, the city yeah they, they are currently like far into the design process um, but I, I do not know off the top of my head the current status of budget and uh, what year uh, those might be budgeted for um, but we are moving ahead with designs that would be um, ready to construct uh, soon so um, I can certainly find that out outside the context of this uh, hearing and, uh, and, and provide additional information on that thank you and, and if I may, Mr. Chair, uh, you know, Mr. Yoder, I'm, ha I'm happy to answer the question about the shuttle bus, but I don't think that's necessarily something that's on point for this hearing. It has nothing to do with specific repairs or um, the pedestrian easement. Um, but as you know, you guys, you know, yourself, Ms. Beatman, were, were around uh, during the process back in, I believe, 2016, 2017. I'm sure you're quite familiar with the project. Uh, frankly, you're probably more familiar with it than I am because we were not the attorneys for the original development. So we do appreciate you asking that question. Um, um, I, I'll answer it without boring the, the commission because again, I don't think it's really part of the action items today, but um, the, the current TAPA and the current cooperation agreement uh, no longer include the shuttle bus. And the reasoning behind that is, is the project was approved in 2017. Um, that, that shuttle bus action and the input that we've received from uh, the transportation folks at uh, BTD and the BPDA is that's no longer something that they would like to see in this location. So we've instead allocated money to different areas, including 50,000 towards neighborhood slow streets, which I know you guys are both champions of. 
and $50,000 towards the installation of a blue bike station instead of that shuttle bus. And that was directly in response to input, again, from BTD transportation folks, BPDA transportation folks, and I believe also State Rep. Russell Holmes was also asked us to change that as well. So I apologize, that's no longer part of the project from what was originally proposed. They've now asked us to reallocate that money towards bike share and slow streets and other improvements instead. Yeah, and Mr. Yoder, I'll be honest, that came from them. That wasn't something that came about in the last year or so based on their new priorities, to be quite honest. Well, we'll have a talk with Mr. Holmes. Understood. Any other comments or questions from members of the commission, members of the public, or PIC staff? All right. Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve public hearing number 13, perhaps with some provisos related to the American Legion Highway sidewalk? I will make a motion, but I'll make the provisos on the specific repair where they probably should fall. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Walk Hill Owner LLC for the acceptance of two pedestrian easements in Walk Hill Street and Canterbury Street with rent of the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. All right. Moving on to public hearing 14 on a petition by Walk Hill Owner LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in West Roxbury, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, the specialty pavement, street trees, bike racks, and driveway curb cuts. Walk Hill Street at address numbers 283 and 289, generally between Canterbury Street and American Legion Highway. Canterbury Street at address numbers 576 and 578, generally southwest of Walk Hill Street. This was appeared as new business on January 27, 2022, and is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs 283 and 289, Walk Hill Street, a.k.a. 576 and 578 Canterbury Street, Roslindale, two sheets dated January 11, 2022. Would the proponents please reintroduce themselves and walk us through the specific repairs that are proposed? Good morning again, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, Attorney Nick Cizula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, here on behalf of Petitioner, and our civil engineer, Steve Sawyer from DCI, who has the plan out for specific repairs and can go through that in more detail. Steve? Good morning, Steve Sawyer, Design Consultancy. So as part of the TAPR agreement, the charge here was to fully reconstruct all the sidewalks to meet complete streets, which we've done. There were two large open curb cuts on Walk Hill. Those have been closed up along Walk Hill. We have an eight-foot pedestrian zone with a four-foot furnishing zone. We provided bike racks for eight bikes along Walk Hill, along with new street trees, five street trees along Walk Hill. And then additionally, we provided this new blue bike station along Walk Hill, or we funded the blue bike station on Walk Hill. And also, we'll be constructing this public access patio with tables and seating for public enjoyment. The other item was traffic calming at the intersection of Canterbury and Walk Hill. We've tightened up the, we're providing a tighter radius for traffic calming at this intersection. And then the sidewalk improvements down Canterbury include a, let's say, five-foot pedestrian zone because it's a side street along with a four-foot furnishing zone with three new trees along Canterbury and new curbing all along our frontage. We have two parking areas, a surface area with access through a 12-foot curb cut, and then a basement level, a garage basement level parking to an 18-foot curb cut. We have 40 spaces on the surface area and then also 
80, uh, 85 additional spaces in the in the basement area. Uh, and as part of the as part of the oh, sorry, as part of the TAPA agreement, we're re we're uh, make, uh, re enhancing the striping for the bike path, uh, the bike lanes on Walk Hill, uh, also striping in some traffic. Um, the, the traffic ventilation bollards here, the plastic bollards at the intersection of Walk Hill. Um, I think Amy had, uh, Ms. Cording had asked for if we could add curbing there. This was part of the, of course, this was part of the Tapper agreement. We'd like to maintain a further Tapper agreement, agreement um, at that location. Uh, we're also providing, uh, updating the striping and signage on uh, the north side of Walk Hill for bike lanes and such. Uh, one thing that's come up regarding, I'm going to jump down to the landscape. This is, so this is our final landscape plan as part of the conservation review process. So on the specific repairs, uh, just per our previous conversation, we'll be looking at providing concrete sidewalk along Walk Hill. And then also there's a four foot chain link fence along Walk Hill. Um, I think it was mentioned about the old guardrail. I guess if not required, you could just have the four foot chain link fence there. Uh, but we are providing a robust planting plan along this banking. Uh, I would imagine that I should add this to the Mylars, this planting area. I don't think we, I don't, I'm not sure if you need the detail of the planting, just the a hatched area showing uh, planting per the conservation permit. I'll defer to the you know, to the board to uh, uh, how that should be handled on the final mile uh, So this is a, an increased area of our work activity. Uh, it's hard to actually the property line isn't in red. You can kind of see it as it runs down just uh, about a quarter of the way up the brook. So we have a fairly extensive area in the public way uh, of American Legion that will be doing some um, invasive removal in um, native planting. And I think that um, that covers the uh, presentation. Also, we're enhancing the striping, uh, new striping for the um, bike lanes running at the intersection. So that's all part of the um, part of the BIC uh, this specific repairs plan. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments from the commission? Um, the Disabilities Commission would just like to confirm that the surface um, treatment of the permeable papers will still meet um, AAB uh, regulations in regards to um, surface texture and jointing, as well as the inclusion of any accessible seating with any fixed seating or tables um, in that area. Um, yeah, yes, the permeable paper will be ADA and we'll, I'll confirm with the landscape architect to ensure that there is ADA compatibility for, for the tables and seating. Great, thank you. Steve, PJ here. Okay. Steve, the new crosswalk which you are putting on Canterbury parallel to Oak Hill, you may want to work with Sarah's team to see whether that crosswalk is properly located to align with the pedestrian path of travel on walk hill okay yeah so sense. always give consideration to when we have to make a right hand job while i'm still trying to go straight that's issue one issue two i think uh make steve you guys both know that on canterbury street uh, there may be like the lack of a sidewalk on canterbury street beyond your property I believe that may be the present condition. So it amplifies the fact that assuming that all your occupants are not going to be driving and some might be using public transit, it amplifies the need to uh, adjust the conditions of the sidewalks on American Legion Highway to further the points which, which Ms. Cording and the good people who have joined this hearing today. So. Uh, you have one of two choices. Either you can build a sidewalk on Canterbury Street for me or do the touch-up. So I think doing the touch-up on American Legion Highway might be the easier way to manage it. Agreed. Okay. Thank you, sir. Understood. Thank you, Para.
Uh, for the guardrail issue, I would check out what your fence is because, right, like it's all about the slope and what we have to catch on its way down this embankment. Um, so I think that if your fence is the appropriate rating, um, we might be able to get rid of the guardrail and or, right, like incorporate the guardrail features into the fence that you select, I guess, is the, um, and then I, I, I it just went by, but the, the stop line on Canterbury looks like it's a little far back, uh, but that one. Which up here? Yeah, 24.6 feet. Yeah, pull that, okay. That actually came directly from my TAPA plan. I'll, I'll pull that forward. Steve, the TAPA plan is a planning document guideline, yeah. so you need to follow the good design guidelines that are fostered through yeah. any coding scheme yeah. and all the public works office in terms of your turning radiuses because Canterbury Street, uh, as you may know, there are quite a few, uh, there's an unusual amount of truck traffic that uses Canterbury Street to get a walk hill. Okay, they are trying to stay away from the American Legion Highway walk in intersection. So please ensure that those new turning radiuses are adequate to manage the, the turning traffic mm -hmm. on the truck side. Okay. Will do. Yep. Okay. Any additional comments or questions from the commission? Uh, Ms. Beatman. Uh, actually, yes. I'll, 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 I'll ask you just, just one moment uh, to hold on. Let me just uh, make sure the commission has all their questions answered, and then we'll, we'll, we'll officially make it uh, open up for public comment. Um, any, any other commission members who uh, wanted to, to raise any issues here? All right. Uh, comments from uh, the public uh, or the PIC staff? And Ms. Beatman, please go ahead. Sure. I did not mean to jump the gun, but you had said both of them at the same time before. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, the, you mentioned an 18 foot curb cut um, off Canterbury. Is that a one way or two way? Um, it's two way. Two way, okay. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Hines. Thank you. Um, I'm actually uh, requesting the opportunity to testify on the Bunker Hill housing redevelopment. I was not sent the email in an appropriate time and therefore was not able to um, engage in this open public meeting, which um, is open and public for a reason. So I realize that that topic has passed but I would really appreciate the opportunity to testify. I took the morning off to be a part of this. I have three kids and a full-time job, and I was, I couldn't get on. So, and I have, um, I have documented that. I don't need to do it at this moment, but before yeah. the meeting is adjourned. Let, let, me, let me confer with the PIC staff about the most appropriate way to handle the situation. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, I think, can provide an opportunity for you to speak uh, at the end of the hearing. Thanks very much. I do All appreciate right. it. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know how to put my hand up. Yeah, sure. Go, go, go ahead. Hi, there. sorry. My name is Peg Preble. Uh, I'm a butter to the project. I'm wondering if traffic includes the traffic lights at American Legion in this project at all? The traffic lights there are set back so far that when you come down Walk Hill, you can't see them until you're at the intersection. Does that have anything in this project? No, we are not providing, we're not proposing any improvements to the traffic signals at the intersection of Walk Hill and uh, American Legion. I think that they, be something that could be included? I, I think that if you, um, if you want to send your, I guess, comments or concerns about the, the signal that you, you Right, what the issue is out here, um, I think that right at BTD, we can probably take a look and see what the appropriate fix is. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that it would happen with this project, but uh, if you can't see the signal, that is a problem that we would like to fix. 
Um, so uh, if you wanted to I, I send it directly to me, um, I think we can figure out what the best course of action is. Okay, where, where do I send it exactly? Uh, well, send it to PIC at boston.gov, just because that's the easiest thing to give you um, that's uh, not a name. Um, and then uh, that uh, will definitely find its way to me. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yes, I can, uh, if the public would like to send any questions regarding the traffic signal specifically to PIC at boston.gov, I will make sure that those are forwarded on to the appropriate uh, person at PTD, likely Amy. Excellent. Any additional comments or uh, questions from members of the public or the PIC staff? Um, I will just confirm that all of the improvements proposed within the American Legion Highway right of way, including landscaping, fencing, removal of guardrail, uh, those should be shown on the updated specific repair mylars. Uh, and those improvements will also be noted in the PIC order and should be listed in the um, LMI agreement that the project will execute. Understood. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number 14? I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Walk Hill Owner LLC for the making of specific repairs within Walk Hill Street, Canterbury Street, and now American Legion Highway. Um, as read into the record by the chair, contingent upon the addition of the work uh, in American Legion Highway um, and the approval of the final mylar plans. Second. Uh, all, of, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So moving on to our final public hearing, uh, which is the uh, on a petition by TC, this is public hearing 15, uh, on a petition by TC Systems Inc. for a grant of location with a with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Boston proper, Beacon Street, west of Brookline Ave, Commonwealth Ave, Brookline Ave, south of Beacon Street. This was introduced as new business on January 27, 2022, and is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Granted Location Proposed Conduit Placement Beacon Street and Brookline Ave, City of Boston, three sheets dated July 27, 2021, revised September 23, 2021. Uh, if the proponents could please introduce themselves uh, and uh, walk us through the proposal here. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Haley Walker with Sienna Engineering Group, um, speaking on behalf of TC Systems, an affiliate of AT&T. Uh, thank you for uh, devoting the time to discussing this project today. And I will now share my screen. So can everybody see that? Okay. Okay, so uh, once again, we will be installing microduct uh, from the existing Verizon manhole um, to the second Verizon manhole located on Brookline Ave. Uh, this work is to uh, provide service to customers in the area, and we will just restore all disturbed services and markings to pre-construction conditions. Um, if you guys have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Any questions from members of the commission? I think the question that I have is, uh, right, this is a micro trench, right? Correct, yes. Um, but you're, yeah, just how micro trench goes through brick? Um, so so uh, the micro trench itself goes at a depth of about six inches, if you can see here on this detail. Um, and so we will be restoring the brick as it currently is in the roadway. So you don't cut the brick, you pick up the brick and put them, put your conduit underneath it? Um, I would have to ask the engineers specific as with regards to how the um, brick is specifically removed, but it, it will be restored to the condition that it is now. 
Okay, yeah, no, I think, I, like, I don't honestly care how you get it under there. It's just that you can't cut it and drop it in. You got to relay it. Um, so it's, it's right. that uh, the bricks can't be cut, um, but the logistics of how you pull that off, I, you know, I don't need to know. Ms. Walker? Yes? To further, to further Ms. Gordon's point, these bricks will installed at a considerable expense to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts about 20 years ago, and it has stood the test of time through all the vehicles that are going through here. And part of it has to do with how tight the joints are between individual bricks. To, so to further Ms. Gordon's point, when you are cutting through these bricks wrong, when you are trying to install your micro asset, the removal of the said bricks is part one, but you need to make sure that your contractors take due diligence in the speed of the construction, recognizing the fact that there's a lot of traffic going through here, that ex massive prudence is exercised in the reinstallation of those bricks properly sealed so that the rest of the bricks don't come out. So please make those points because we will be looking towards your team's proper installation of this asset. This, uh, this was a huge investment by the Commonwealth's part. Okay, Ms. Walker? Absolutely, understood. So we will pass that on to the contractor. And um, one of the advantages, fortunately, of my product is that it's installed fairly quickly. So um, uh, that's a big advantage, especially for this area here. Thank you, Haley. The bricks that are going to slow you down, not the not the micro trench. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any additional comments or questions from members of the commission? Any comments or questions from PIC staff or the public? No, we're all set. Do I hear a motion to approve uh, public hearing number 15? Make a motion to approve a petition by TC Systems for a grant of location in Beacon Street and Brookline Ave as read to the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. All right, so if I uh, have my paper in order here, I think we're gonna attempt to go back to the utility pole hearing section of the program. Um, this, uh, but before I, I, I read this into the record, can I just confirm that we have a representative from uh, Eversource uh, who's able to uh, speak? Chanel, are you there? Not, I see her. I see, yeah, I, I, think, I can see. Her. I think she was going to try to call in. Uh, let's go can ahead you and hear me get. Now? Oh, there oh we go. yes, there we go. Excellent. All right, glad, glad we got the technical issues sorted out. So I will, I will read the uh, the, the first utility poll hearing uh, into the record, and then we can uh, then, then we can you can you can introduce yourself officially. Um, so a utility poll one on a petition by Eversource Energy for a pole installation within Gardner Street, Public Way, Brighton, to install three new utility poles to be located on its northerly side, generally east of Malvern Street. Um, would the presenter uh, or presenters please introduce themselves, their affiliation, and give a brief overview of the work that is proposed. Go ahead, Chanel. Yeah. We had you. Chanel, I can present. Chanel, are you? Yep. I can present the plan oh. if that helps. Right here. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. we can. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. Chanel Grant from Eversource Electric. And the first job I have is um, on Gardner Street. We are. Uh, Temporarily relocating. Oh. Okay. Okay, we are temporarily relocating three poles and the street lights across the street to accommodate a building project at 1079 Brighton Ave. Yeah. 
you have any questions or comments from the commission? So these poles are then going to come out and go back to the other side of the street eventually? Yes, yes, they will. They're on, um, yep, it's just a temporary, but the new construction, and then they will go back and place in the old place. How will the sidewalk be restored uh, at the conclusion of this and the relocation back? Okay, so the, the sidewalk is concrete, and once all the construction is done, then we're going to install the sidewalk for the concrete. So it will be, it will be re-poured as a concrete slab rather than as an asphalt patch? Yeah. Yeah, I have... Um, and asphalt sidewalk. I'm sorry, concrete. Okay. But I will, I can also double check that too as well. Any additional questions or comments from members of the commission? Any comments or questions from PIC staff or from the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve utility poll hearing number one? I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Eversource Energy for a pole installation on Gardner Street as read in the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Uh, moving on, utility poll hearing number two on a petition by Eversource Energy for a pole installation within Saratoga Street Public Way, East Boston, to install one new utility pole to be located on its southeasterly side at address number 223, generally between Brook Street and Putnam Street. The proponents please introduce themselves and uh, explain what's happening here. Okay, this is Saratoga Street, East Boston. And all we're doing is installing a new, a new pole, one new pole, or a new building, new construction. Are there questions for, or comments from members of the commission? The pole should be five feet from the driveway. There's no dimension, but it looks kind of close. I think additionally, um, in this area, we do have an accessible parking space. Um, so if that is going to be affected due to the installation of this pole, um, you would just need to um, contact and coordinate with uh, the Disabilities Commission to get that relocated um, temporarily um, so folks still have access to that space. And you can get in direct contact with me um, by um, emailing me at ada at boston.gov. You said ada? Yep, at boston.gov. OK, so you're, you're saying that, um, do, could you repeat that regarding the parking space? Yeah, so there is an accessible on-street um, parking space um, along this curb in the vicinity. So um, if you determine that um, it will be affected due to construction activities, um, we would just like to coordinate with your team um, to ensure that that space is still usable um, for um, the person using that space. Okay. Okay, yes, I can pass that on. Perfect, thank you. Any additional comments uh, from the commission? Um, any uh, comments or questions from PIC staff or members of the public, and perhaps uh, PIC staff can elaborate on how we should address the issue of placement uh, relative to the curb cut? Uh, so the plan can just be updated to uh, show that minimum five foot dimension uh, from the curb cut. Uh, Chanel, you can just resubmit that to me, um, and that'll be a condition of the approval. Uh, excellent. Uh, do I hear a motion uh, to uh, approve uh, utility poll hearing number two? 
I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Eversource Energy for a pole installation on Saratoga Street as read into the record by the chair. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. Uh, last up on the utility poll section, utility poll hearing number three on a joint petition by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England for a poll relocation within Dana Avenue Public Way, Hyde Park to relocate one existing utility poll located on, on its southwesterly side at address number 11, generally northwest of Hyde Park Avenue. Uh, would the proponent please uh, explain what is proposed here? Okay, what we're doing is we are relocating the pole to accommodate a driveway, a new driveway. And we're moving the pole 15 feet. We're moving 15 feet east of it. Any comments or questions from the commission? Any comments or questions from PIC staff or members of the public? No, none. Do I hear a motion to approve utility poll hearing number three? Make a motion to approve a joint petition by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England for a poll relocation within Dana Ave as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? All right, so moved. Uh, thank you all very much. Um, next up, we have uh, the city roadway uh, acceptance hearing, uh, city roadway acceptance number one, uh, on a petition by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Transportation for the acceptance of a city roadway of the following, uh, for acceptance as a city roadway of the following public ways in Boston proper, Atlantic Avenue between Cross Street and Oliver Street slash Seaport Boulevard, Oliver Street between Purchase Street and Atlantic Avenue slash Seaport Boulevard, High Street between Atlantic Avenue and Purchase Street slash Fitzgerald Surface Road, India Street between Atlantic Avenue and Fitzgerald Surface Road, Milk Street between Atlantic Avenue and Fitzgerald Surface Road, State Street between Atlantic Avenue and Fitzgerald Surface Road, Mercantile Street between Fitzgerald Surface Road and Atlantic Avenue slash Cross Street, Cross Street between Atlantic Avenue and Hanover Street, Hanover Street between Cross Street and Blackstone Street, Purchase Street between Oliver Street and High Street slash Fitzgerald Surface Road, John F. Fitzgerald Expressway Surface Road between Hanover Street and High Street slash Purchase Street, North Street between Fitzgerald Surface Road and Blackstone Street, Blackstone Street between North Street and Hanover Street. As shown on a set of plans entitled Public Roadway Acceptance Plan, Atlantic Avenue, Purchase Street, Seaport Boulevard, High Street, India Street, Milk Street, State Street, Mercantile Street, Cross Street, Surface Road, North Street, Blackstone Street, and Hanover Street, Boston Proper, 37 sheets, dated September 1st, 2021. Uh, would the proponents please uh, introduce themselves uh, and their affiliations and walk through uh, what is proposed to happen here? Morning, uh, Mr. Chair. I guess it's good afternoon now. Uh, this is uh, John Romano from Mass DOT. Um, I'm here with my colleague uh, Alan Ramirez from Mass DOT, and also Matt Goldie from HDR. Um, we are enthusiastically here uh, today um, as part of the uh, Central Lottery Project to turn over these streets to the City of Boston. Um, as uh, as I'm sure you know. Um, We've been working on this um, for way too many years. Um, we, um, um, I'd like to say thank you, first of all, to um, you know, members of your team, Amy, Todd, um, Tara, and Ashley, um, who have been working tirelessly with us over the years to get to this point. Um, what, I've, um, what I've had is I asked Matt um, to prepare kind of an overview of all of the streets on two plans. Um, there are 37 sheets. If you'd like us to go through all of them, we can. Um, but I thought this outline, this is how we did it the last time, uh, giving an overview, um, looking overhead of kind of the Rose Kennedy Greenway, um, showing the central corridor um, with all of the streets um, that we will be turning over. Um, and, and asking for your acceptance today. So basically, starting at the southern end of the central corridor, um, you know, um, Oliver Street, Seaport Boulevard area, 
uh, um, running parallel to each other, Purchase Street and Atlantic Ave, moving down uh, the corridor um, uh, in a northerly direction, down towards the north end, um, and going all the way down to um, Hanover Street. Um, we um, considered this uh, contract area too, where we did all of the remediation work um, over the past couple of construction seasons. Um, and we go a little bit beyond that to Hanover Street. We're also including uh, Blackstone Street between North Street and Hanover Street um, in this section. Um, we, do, we do have one more section in the downtown corridor to come to you with. Hopefully in a couple of, in the next two months, we should be ready um, to, pro to provide that to TIC, which will take us from Hanover Street to Causeway Street and finish the, um, the uh, central artery corridor um, at that time. But today, from um, basically from the Oliver Street Seaport Boulevard area all the way down to Hanover Street, uh, we present to the uh, Commission today. Thank you, Mr. Romano. Um, any questions or comments from the Commission? Oh, good morning, Mr. Romano. This is Denise Dallin from Boston Water and Sewer. Um, I know you crossed your T's and dot your I's. Um, we do have some new staff that uh, was not involved with this project, but do you mind just stating for the record that um, you received a um, acceptance, that we, the BWSC would accept the uh, drainage in the letter to PIC? Do you mind just stating that for the record or just or talk, talk about that? Yes, um, so there is a letter. Um, I. I have it in my package and it is in your package. Um, so far, the record, there is a letter um, from uh, Boston Water and Sewer accepting all of the appropriate drainage, uh, et cetera, um, from, from us. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Romano. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments from members of the commission? No, this is cop culmination of a lot here and i think that we're just happy to be at the well one of the end lines any comments or questions from pic staff or the public no none do i hear a motion to approve the acceptance of these city roadways i'll make a motion to approve a petition by the commonwealth of massachusetts Department of Transportation for the acceptance of city roadways in Atlantic Ave, Oliver Street, High Street, India Street, Milk Street, State Street, Mercantile Street, Cross Street, Hanover Street, Purchase Street, John F. Fitzgerald, Expressway, Surface Road, North Street, Blackstone Street, as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is uh, long in coming. So appreciate all the work uh, by many people that got us here. Um, moving on to our uh, final order of business before we uh, 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 bring Ms. Hines in to, to, uh, uh, to provide the comments that, that she requested to provide. Um, so the, the final hearing here is uh, new business hearing number one, uh, 222 Friend Street, Boston Proper, grant of location on a petition by Crown Castle. Uh, would the presenters please introduce themselves and uh, explain what is being proposed here? Uh, I think Anna actually happened to get kicked out and just re-entered the room, so she may need just a second. No although, worries. Although we can Brian uh, Cunningham wait is just in a too. moment. Brian, Anna, go ahead when you're ready. Yes, uh, good afternoon. My apologies. I had temporary problems with um, connection. My name is Anna Simashka, and um, I'm with Crown Castle. And um, with me today is Brian Cunningham and Ashley Perry. We are petitioning for approval for grant allocation approval uh, for, um, for a small stone node replacement at uh, 222 Note of uh, Friend Street. Uh, this project would not require any trenching. And uh, give me a second. I would like to start my screen share. There we go. So this project would not require any trenching. The request uh, for the cha change came in from Boston Street Lighting due to change in lighting on the street to LED acorn units. 
The proposed pole design will match the rest of the street and create a unified appearance on the roadway. Uh, are there any questions or comments about this? Yeah, so I, I think the first question I'd ask is this appears to be a non-standard um, design for a, uh, for a double acorn uh, antenna structure. Um, I believe there is a pre-approved design with a whip antenna rather, rather than a canister antenna. Um, and I'm interested to understand why um, this is being proposed in the way that it is. So uh, the design where the canister antenna is currently being reviewed for approval, it just hasn't come through yet. And in this particular instance, we cannot proceed with the whip antenna, which would have been much easier. There would be a loss in, significant loss in coverage if we do that. That's the reason. It's about 30 to 40% less loss in coverage. Is it? So, I mean, I, I raise this issue in part because I know that uh, and was personally involved in, in uh, previous years in another capacity with the city and the establishment of this program and the uh, model for pre-approving designs. And I know that the city and the PIC at the time had um, significant concerns about uh, the uh, aesthetics and functionality of a uh, of double acorn lights with canister antennas. There is a, a small number that had been individually approved, but uh, there was no uh, pre-approved design uh, that was permitted by the PIC uh, for a canister antenna um, with a double acorn uh, lighting fixture. Uh, those were um, years ago presented and rejected as uh, options. So uh, the question, I guess, would be, is there another configuration of uh, your antenna structures that would allow you to achieve necessary signal coverage using whip antennas, perhaps um, with an additional location or some other reconfiguration of the design of the uh, distributed antenna system. Uh, we can propose that, however, we think it would just take much more time. And like I said, this new design is being reviewed for approval, for reapproval, I guess, right now. And for, I mean, unification purposes, this is the way it looks right now. So it kind of sticks out. And we think that this view would be much better, basically, for this location. Uh, hence, and uh, we didn't want to wait for the, for the exhibit approval for this, just because this sidewalk is being, I guess, rebuilt, reconstructed. And this particular notice is a hold up there, basically. They want to they just switch it out and finish, the, finish it up. Does that answer your question? Um, it does. I'm uh, not certain that we want to move forward approving one-off designs um, absent the individual, uh, absent the review of, of a sort of pre-approved design package, uh, especially if there is a pre-approved design uh, proposal for something uh, of this design. It may make sense to consider that uh, altogether. Um, but I will uh, take a pause and defer to other members of the commission to see if they have uh, any additional questions or follow-up thoughts on this. I mean, if we're doing the sidewalk over, right, like I agree that it makes sense to do now, um, but in the event that we do approve uh, ex an exhibit for a uh, double acorn that is in a whip that has something else in the future, uh, that I think that we would look that if this isn't the standard that ends up being approved, that this becomes the approved standard um, and that you would come back and install uh, something that, right, like if this never makes it into our inventory, mm -hmm. um, that you would come back and put whatever does make it into our inventory uh, so that you have all approved uh, standards out there. We would definitely look into this, Amy. And uh, like I said, uh, like, uh, on the previous commenter, um, out, the additional antennas or additional locations would also require most likely additional trench and additional cost, which we would like to avoid in this case. We don't want to dig up the streets no, no, no more than we already are, basically. So, and Emmy, uh, obviously, this is one off situation. I, in the last few years, we have not brought, it, brought anything of the kind in front yeah, of you. Yeah, no, I think, I think that that's kind of what we're after, right? Is that, yeah, PIC so we, yeah, we don't want to right? make a habit of this. Yeah, we don't yeah. want to make a habit of this either because this process is much lengthier for us on our on our side as well. And we yes. definitely we want to avoid that. Our, our questions will get increasingly difficult the more you show up. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, good afternoon, Anna. This is Denise Dalton from Boston Water and Zoa. Uh, just a friendly reminder. 
if there are any uh, changes to what we approved um, from now between now and public hearing, you just have to get the reapproval again from our engineer and customer services department. Of course. Thank you. Any additional comments or questions from members of the commission? Um, also, a friendly reminder um, that just up the street are, um, I think, a couple of accessible parking spaces. I know um, I've coordinated um, offline with um, Brian on that, um, but if anything has changed with the construction management plan, um, we just like to be kept in the loop of any updates. Thank you. Of course, Sarah. Thank you. Any comments or questions from PIC staff or the public? No, none. Is two weeks enough time for you to address any concerns that you've heard here today? It should be enough. All right. Uh, well, we will see you on uh, March 3rd, I believe. Um, and thank you very much. Uh, so before we uh, adjourn, I do want to uh, invite uh, Ms. Hines to, um, to address the commission and uh, would uh, apologize for any technical difficulties that you may have had um, connecting earlier to this uh, hearing. I really appreciate that, and thank you. Um, my, I, I didn't hear what was discussed, but I, I'm, I'm under the impression that it had to do with the tree removal um, from phase one of the redevelopment. Am I, am I correct? To, to my knowledge, no discussion took place about tree removal, specifically this related to the um, changes to the uh, street network and uh, some of the specific repairs that were proposed uh, to the sidewalk and uh, the, the, the public way as part of this uh, project. Okay, well, the public way, that's, I mean, most of these trees are, are along the public way, and I just want to say that um, there are 347 mature trees on this site, and there was no land use study done um, according to the DPIR for this project at any time. And the land use study, had it been done, would have shown, A, that there was a huge environmental impact to demolishing this 27-acre site, but also that it was the hottest part of the battlefield during the Revolutionary War. And I'm not going to get into that. It's a fact. And if you look in the Library of Congress and see the maps, you'll know um, that what I'm saying is accurate. In any case, any time a property has been federally subsidized at any time, it must undergo a land use study. And that has not been done. It's the breach. The developer knows it. The investor knows it. And people in the city know it. And a lot of people in Charlestown now know it. So a land use study was not done. It's an Article 80 project for a development that was taken by eminent domain in 1939 subsidized by the federal government, it has to have a land use study before they can put a shovel in the ground. The people that live there now are waiting to live in better housing. They deserve it. They're going to be waiting for a very long time because nothing can happen until that land use study is done. Also, the BHA claims to own the public space that exists around the public buildings, the, the housing, um, but those spaces, as they were federally subsidized, belong to the public and they have the trees on them. So every tree that sits on the BHA managed land is a city tree and needs a hearing. And I just want to say that for the record. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, appreciate you joining uh, and uh, providing those remarks. Um, with that, I think we've concluded our agenda for the day. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you all very much. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you very much.